Do you want to talk about anything that we did this weekend? We went this weekend, we went to a, a vanilla hotel as swingers. Hi, I'm Richard. Hi. <laughs> and uh, over there is is Lauren. Say hi, Lauren. Hey, guys. We haven't been on camera in a really long time. Lauren and I started a podcast about five years ago, maybe six years ago. I can't even remember, but we've been in the lifestyle for about 20 years ago. We started in the lifestyle almost as soon as we started dating. We wound up in our first threesome almost a month inside of our dating. We never really stopped since. Uh, we didn't even really know the lifestyle was a thing. We just thought we were really big whores. So uh, Lauren is thin and available. She loves hung men who are genu genu genuinely older. Uh, but she does like younger guys too, as long as they're... On the bad boy side, yeah. uh, if you have tats, front of the line. Uh, she does love giant bukkakis. Um, <laughs> Can't get enough, Richard. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. What I wanted to do was jump on the mic and talk about what we did in these, these past several days is friends came to town and they wound up proving a theory that I had always had within the lifestyle, which is be the host of your own party is the best way to meet people. And they were the masters of this. Oh my God. Like, so, so impressed. I wish I had like a waterproof notebook to sort of, I don't know why you would want a waterproof notebook. Cause we were in the pool. Like the whole time it would have gotten splashed on. We were not in the pool. The, I don't know what trip you were on, but we were not in the pool the whole time ever. Or we were in the pool for like two hours. Seems like the whole time. Did you black out after the pool? <laughs> Maybe there were too many shots. There were a lot of shots. <laughs> But uh, if, if you don't, if you haven't listened to the podcast, one of the things that, that Lauren and I always talk about uh, as far as meeting people is being not just the life of the party, but introducing yourself and talking and being as social as possible is probably the best way you can meet people in the lifestyle, in these swinger environments. Just being a wallflower is one of the worst things you can do because it really does send this signal to other people's, to other people's which is the plural of people. I don't know if you got the memo. It changed. It, it, it changed. It did. Yeah. Webster changed it. Webster changed it. it. Mm -hmm. It's in the Miriam Dictionary now. <laughs> it's, it's one of the things that people watch for is people watch your social behavior with others, right? I do it. You do it. And you look at other people and you're like, they're not talking to anybody. They're mean. Yeah. Or they're just like, they're standoffish or they're only here with their significant other and they don't want to talk to anybody. Or you just make up a bunch of reasons in your brain that why not to go over and say hi. Right. Usually I take it personally and say it's <laughs> yeah, me. I, so, I always take it personally. Right. They proved this theory to me, I, I just, I, I mean, they, they they intimidated me that they were so social. They intimidated me <laughs> by, by walking up to every, and it didn't matter really what anyone looked like. It's not like they were just hitting, and this was a vanilla resort, yeah, by the way, yeah. but they were hunting for vanillas. <laughs> um, and they, they honestly, they had in their, their quest to just be nice to people. They landed inadvertently the two hottest youngest <laughs> girls in the entire hotel. And this is a hotel with like, I don't know, a thousand rooms in it, maybe a thousand. Oh, pro yeah, probably like five thousand rooms yeah. Two of the hottest, the hottest chicks in the place. There was no one hotter mm -mm. in there. And they were up on these two all night long. I'm pretty sure they had sex with them. If they didn't, I'm making that the story anyway. Yeah. I, I don't care. They did it in our brain. They made a, a real, difference in, in my life, reiterating that I'm right. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's basically what I do is I go through life and I watch, uh, I watch people reaffirm how I'm correct. And usually when I'm wrong, I just ignore it. You didn't make a mental note of that. No, I just no. ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's healthy. It helps me, it helps me survive. But so we go up and we see this couple my hotel is, uh, it's breathless. It's uh, the hotel's breathless. I'm not, I'm not afraid to name it. Um, and <laughs> breathless is this hotel that is like, if you were going to tier hotels, I'd say breathless is like, there's, there's hotels that sort of live in this, 
I don't want to say gray area because they're they're below a gray area. It's not like swingers or lifestyle people mm-hmm. go there, but they they are a hotel. One of their hotels is a topless hotel, so there is this air of sexiness. It is adults only. Mm-hmm. It is kind of a sexy environment. So there are people on a spectrum there. Yeah, and they have like young entertainers and stuff, and a club and some things that would encourage young fun. In fact, this place got so wild they had to calm it down because <laughs> it got it got too spring breaky there, so they had to calm it down a bit. And that's sort of what what happens a lot of times. They let it go a little bit too far. Yeah, and it winds up turning into a place that gets a little bit too wild. So we go up there and we just have all of. All our intentions are just to hang out with them. And uh, I'm just looking forward to having sex with them. Unbeknownst to me, they were trying to recruit the entire hotel, <laughs> which was great. And but- it's quite possible they could have... I mean, they, they could have probably created some sort of orgy if there was a space. I'm absolutely sure they could have gotten us an orgy yeah. and sold property for me. <laughs> Simultaneously, there's no doubt in my mind that they could have gotten both done at the same time. They were that good. They would have been. They were closing deals all day, all night long. And this is hysterical. The other thing that's really important, I think, which, and this is something that we don't have, and we have always admired in lifestyle. And this is really important. And this is something you're born with. This is like being a a pro swinger and being. A, a pro swinger, but you're just, you're just not an MVP. <laughs> These people need no sleep. They, oh, yeah. they, God. they could rock all day, all night, no nap. They could go on three hours sleep and they are ready to go again and again and again. And, and I, I look like I just got out of a, an old age facility. <laughs> like if, if, if you had asked me, do you want me to, wheel you around in a wheelchair, I would have been like, I'm into that. Is it your time for your pill? Yeah, that would have helped me. I'm not embarrassed by that. Well, you kept asking them like, what's the secret? What do you do? What's your secret? They just do. They just are. And I've met these people at these parties where they go, 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 go. It's like that thump and that music just keeps them alive and they keep going. And I asked them the obvious question, are you guys on a lot of cocaine? And well, the that's answer what is it no. Felt like, yeah. The answer is no. They I, they've never even tried it. That is one of the things that is like such a great it's a great attribute to have for a swinger. For a swinger. Yeah. Yeah, because the longer you stay social with the group, the better chances you have to connect with everybody in that group. <laughs> that's that deal. Yeah, unlike us who are like um I need <laughs> I need a social break. Yeah, for sure. I think there's definitely both types. It's, um, you know, I, I see people who try to stay out as long as they can, but then they'll just disappear. And I've asked them before and they're like, I just needed to have some quiet time. And, and I'm like, Oh, okay, good. Cause and then I don't feel like the oddball because, you know, yeah. we throw the parties and, and I can't keep up with our own schedule. The other side of this that I wanted to talk about is how dangerous swingers can be at vanilla resorts and how much like like drug addicts we are. And I'm going to tell you why. Because sometimes I see vanillas partying, right? And we're in this little d- disco nightclub area, right? Dancing. Or we're in the pool. Like you thought, we were in the pool all day, all night. But we're in the pool, we're partying, we're drinking, right? Our, now I know there's four, at least four swingers there. There's four lifestylers there. Mm-hmm. Possibly another couple that we heard of, mm-hmm. I, I, I think. Okay. Now as lifestylers, your goal usually is to hunt and kill by the end of the night, right? It's just, <laughs> and you get, you get fixated on it, right? It's, it's an adrenaline rush because yeah. you're like, I'm going to track down these people or I'm, I've chosen these and this is, this is my hunt and this is, I like them and I'm going to try to bed them. It just is what it is. Yeah, it sounds a lot worse than... I do make it sound pretty creepy. It's just like um, you set out for uh, an accomplishment almost, and you want to convince the vanilla that we're having a lot of fun, and they can have as much fun if you want to give it a whirl. 
Right. Sort of thing. I put notches in my belt. No, you don't. Why? Is that a thing? Is that an actual saying? Because I, I put notches in my belt. I heard notches in the bedpost. Oh, I do that too. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the thing is with, with us as lifestylers, again, just this observation, watching them be social and watching us be social, especially me when I was talking to this young girl, because of course I was trying to have sex with her. I mean, of course I am. Of course. In my lame way. And I was failing miserably. <laughs> right. 